Booyah! Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Glendon Cameron here once again. This is day two, the 30 days to $10,000. Let's have a little conversation. Since we are moving up to a greater limit, because really, if you're doing $10,000 every month, that's 120000 gross. And if you're in resale, you may get a bump in December during the Christmas season. Maybe not. Depends on what you're doing. But we're at a point where you need to add a little structure. You can't keep doing it off the cuff. Part of this course is predicated on that you took 30 days to $2,500. So we're not going to go over that stuff and we're not going to talk about it. You know, if you want to get that course, I'll let you know at the end of this presentation. With that, if you're new, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. And the second part is we're going to talk about some stuff. Um, there's going to be a few things that you're going to need. And you should also be aware that this is going to cost you a little money. Once again, this is predicated on the fact that you took 30 days to $2,500. So if some of this stuff seems a little crazy, that's going to be the reason why. This was the first project of 30 days to $10,000. Consistency is very, very important in this. It's extremely important. Also, the first task for the next 30 days, you're going to write 50 to 100 words per day about you, your family, your business. You can write about you one day. You can write about your family one day. You can write about your business. You can actually write more than 50 to 100 words. That's the floor. <laughs> That's the floor. That's where you just walk in. You can easily go past this if you want to, because this will help you create a better thought process, which you're going to need, because we're going to talk about structure today. There's some of the tricks and techniques and some of the things I'm going to tell you that I've never mentioned before. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Just to let you know now, it's a little bit after three. These are some of the things that you're going to need. Pen or pencil, paper or notepad, the right fucking attitude. Uh, yes, you can use your iPad. However, you'll get more juice from writing this stuff down. You really will. Uh, formats 25 to 40 minutes a day since this is going to go on for the next 20 this is yeah next 25 days i'm not going to try to have you here all day long because the thing is is to get you in give you a task give you guidance and get you out and so you can actually go out and start doing that's where the success is going to come from doing not watching not reading not accumulating all this knowledge there are people I see that go from Facebook to Facebook group. It's, it's like their their profile picture. <clears throat> it's like that gopher. It's like, you know, you'll see it. Then, bam, it pops up again. Then they pop up again. They pop up again. And they're in all of these groups. And they haven't focused on one thing to really be do well with that. Just something to say. OK, uh, recorded versions of this course will be available in the Facebook group, which is a paid group. Just to say that it's a paid group. But more on that later. The pledge. I love this new pledge. I am worth my ambition. I live for now. The past be damned. The future is mine to shape. Understand success is not a moment. It is. It's a life. Despite the fear in my heart, I will move forward each day I breathe. Design your life. Live how your intention warrants. Yes, we'll be saying that pledge every day. Increase your business to 10000 per month. Net. Net. That's what you get to take home and pay taxes on. At some point, gain freedom from a normal life of TGIF living. What kind of life is it where you work your ass to the bone Monday through Friday, really Sunday night through Friday? Because if you think about it, Sunday's a work night because you got to get up and go to work. To enjoy one and a half days of freedom. What kind of life is that? If you believe in abundance, believe that the world has a lot to offer, you're not living that life. Day two. <laughs> when I saw this cat, uh, I, I just started cracking up. I, I totally, totally started cracking up because it was insane. It was totally insane when I saw it because have you ever done that? You just threw your hands up. It's like, why? Why? And this is a very important question. 
It's not about discipline. It's about the why. Many people are not as successful as they could be because they haven't answered this question. Why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you want money? Why? You got to ask yourself those questions and come up with a very solid answer. You could try to force yourself to do some things, and some people are very successful at that. I forced myself to do things for a few years that I absolutely hate it because I thought the benefit was worth it. One of the joys of living is you discover that, oh, there's a different way to do this. Oh, there's a different way to do that. Forcing yourself to do some is a short term fix to a larger issue. If you never get to your why, it's just going to fall apart. You're just going to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do this. It's, it's just why. You, you've got to find out your why. Uh, That's what I call crackhead ambition without the high. When you when the hustle numbers come out, you'll you'll see about that section. That's one of the chapters in the book. You will be able to. I'll even go into it. My descent into hell and living in the hood. I got to know crackheads. We got to know these people. Talk to them, see them. I mean, they were community fixtures. I mean, everyone knew who they were. Some were very personable. Many of them were earning. $150, $500 a day. And I remember having this conversation with one of them. And she said, she, you know, she said, it's kind of funny. I'll make more in one night than I've ever made in a week of hard work in my life. Same person. But the motivation or the why is much different. Why is she out there doing the things that she was doing to make that type of money? Because she wanted to get that high. That high was the why. And it was very, very compelling. It was extremely compelling. Now, imagine if you can get that kind of compelling why without the high, (laughs) without the drug addiction, you'd be an extremely powerful person. There would be nothing that you couldn't do. And that's one of the things that I hopefully will get you on the path because it's a journey to that level. No one can take you there. You must walk it on your own. I can be like your Sherpa. I decided to talk about, you know, mentors and customers because everyone's like, who do you listen to? Who do you talk to? Well, meet Jennifer. No, that's not her kid. Uh, I would not put anyone's kid up without their permission. But it's a cute little girl. Um, Jennifer, which is her real name, is a stay at home mom that makes 85,000 bucks a year. She makes candles. She makes very nice candles. She's a customer. She's a client. Works from home. Makes all her candles and stuff from home. Not married. And she has two children. And I think last time we talked, she works 40 hours a week. Now, if you really think about what I just said, she works 40 hours a week. She works from home. She has two kids. Makes 85 grand a year. And she lives in the part of the country where $85,000 a year is bullying. Because most of the country doesn't make 40 G's a year. Half the country makes less than $40,000 a year. And she lives in a part of the country that's very nice and very rural. And uh, if she was making 40, she'd be doing well there. So she's literally bullying. And it's just one of the really, really thing, strange things that comes to my mind is when a person makes the decision. Jennifer made the decision that she wanted to stay home with her kids and the dog. She's got a dog. And she wanted to make candles. And she found me on YouTube about two years ago. She's taking some courses. And she's applied a gut-wrenching level of effort to get her business off the ground. And she came back as a consult client. And we were able to consistently improve her business about 15% every month. Now she's up to 85,000 a year. Staying at home with the kiddos, doing all this good stuff. Because her why is, and this is her why. And that's why I keep saying I'm uh, my, my, uh, th- I'm going to start calling my consults therapy sessions. Well, she had a, a father and a mother that she never saw. Never spent any time with them. They were very, very successful. 
she had to find this stuff. She said, oh, you know, my house was great, lived in a great neighborhood, but I never saw my parents. So frequently, as children who are left alone, she became promiscuous and a wayward kid and ended up being pregnant not once but twice. Her proper parents properly kicked her ass out of the house because she was an embarrassment. So she got kicked out the house with not one but two kids. Uh, she's very young. Uh, I don't even think she I think she just hit her 30s. So this goes down and she's out there and she meets someone. He does this stuff to her. It doesn't work out. Once again, she's kicked out again on the street with two kids. So she goes through this process and she props herself up and she finally gets some level of stability. But she becomes the parent that she didn't want to be. She's providing for her kids, but she never sees them. Other people are literally raising her kids. So her why became, I want to be a parent that makes really good money. And I want to see my kids every day. I want to make breakfast for them. I want to make lunch for them. And I want to make dinner for them. And when they get off the school bus, I want to be home. That's her why. And I tell you this because money is a tool. <laughs> money is not power. It is not some mystical thing. It is a tool. And if you learn how to use that tool properly, you can create a life of freedom, design and intent, which she has because she makes candles and she works 40 hours a week. And you know, like, well, and people go, oh, well, 40 hours, that's what everyone does. Nope, nope, nope. Everyone does not work 40 hours a week. If you have a job that you work eight hours a day and you get a lunch break of 30 minutes to an hour, you're actually at work nine hours a day. Correct. That's 45 Whoa, wait, wait, wait. No, no. How long did it take you to get to work? How long did it take you to get home? Add another hour. That's 10 hours a day. We're up to 50 hours a week. Wait a minute. You're taking work home. You're working overtime. When you truly factor in the cost, many people are working 50 hours a week to 65 hours a week with, a, with a, about 20, 30 percent being unpaid. You don't get up at a certain time in the morning to not go to work. Most people, if they don't have to go to work, they sleep in. So the minute your feet hit the floor, those are working hours because everything that you're doing is predicating you going to work. So with her working 40 hours and understand it's not eight hours straight. It's an hour here. It's two hours there. Because that's one of the things that we uh, quantified uh, when it's like, OK, we worked on your process make you as efficient as possible so you have more time to be with the kids because that's your why, right? So she's got a very streamlined process. She gets a lot done. She has two assistants and uh, she's living that life that she wants because she's found out what her why was. So that's the power of finding your why. When you get to your why, the discipline problem dissipates. If it goes back to this movie, Confessions with Alec Baldwin, I believe, and Ben Kingsley. Great movie. Great movie. And this guy says this line. It isn't that people don't know what the right thing is to do. Once they know what the right thing is, they do it. It's the problem is, what is the right thing? I'll give you an example. I don't think I said that right, but I think you get the gist of it. When 9-11 happened and we all had this unknown enemy that was crashing planes into buildings, not one, not two, but three. Everyone was scared. Do you know there was no crime in New York when that went down? Because everyone had a compelling why to band together. None of the bullshit that normally went on happened because everyone was in the same place because everyone had the same why for a very brief period of time. So when people figure out why they should do the right thing, then doing the right thing is very, very easy. So when you figure out your why, whatever that may be, then the discipline and the motivation, all that stuff goes away. It all goes away. Now, <laughs> how to find your why? Remember the 50 to 100 words a day. Uh, one of the things about this course is everything's hooked in to everything else. If you take the first course, 
then this course makes even more sense to you, even though it's a standalone course, like say if you're a business owner, you can actually come in and learn some stuff from scratch, but you get more benefit by being part of the program because all of this stuff hooks up together. So 50 50 to 100 words a day or more, I recommend more, you're gonna start finding those answers there. When I got started in the internet marketing space, because that's what I do now, no, I'm not a reseller. I haven't been a reseller since 2009. Someone in a blog post, and this is why you have to get out there and do your own work and read and research, said, don't start one blog, start three. And I was like, OK. And they said it was very simple that you start three blogs and one of them is going to be predominant. One's going to just go, just command more of your attention. It's going to be more fun. And that became Urban Pack Rap because it was business credit mentor, um, just a relationship blog and Urban Pack Rat. I thought business credit mentor was going to knock it out the park. Like, hey, everyone wants to do business credit. And then I thought the relationship uh, blog, uh, which I can't even remember the name of it, <laughs> it was very short lived because within a matter of weeks, I was like, OK, Urban Pack Rat. I was writing like five blog posts a day and I was doing all this stuff because it was what I knew. So doing your 50 to 100 words a day, just getting into the inner exploration, you may actually come to some scary realizations that everything that you're doing right now may not even be close to your why. You're just doing it because of obligations and you were expected to do that stuff. And you could be living in a nice house, nice neighborhood, like Jennifer, and miserable. Because that lifestyle is so far removed from your why. Many people laugh at me because I don't own a house and I can get a house if I want one. And it's just, oh, you should get a house. I don't want, if, and everyone that owns a house out here already knows you have a lot of upkeep. You got to change filters out every season. You got to check for termites. I rather use my mental bandwidth on doing this webinars, creating products, writing, and looking at the land in my navel than maintaining the house. Probably at some point I will buy a house again. If uh, if I ever get married or something like that, yeah, I'll buy a house because it wouldn't be just about me. It would be about the family thing and it wouldn't just be me and it'd make more sense. But when you discover your why and you get to a point where you're living on purpose, what everyone else is doing doesn't really matter to you because it's none of your business. doesn't matter. It's like, hey, they're happy. Fine. I'm doing my own thing. And there's something else that happens when you get really happy. It's hard for you to hate on people. You just find yourself. Give you an example. The other day I'm doing a video. People are acting like idiots on the road. I didn't cuss out anyone. No one got the finger. I was like, oh, you know, this person's like in a hurry. Maybe they're trying to go home. Maybe their kid's sick. When you're happy, it provides this buffer where you are not so quick to just go off on someone or to hate on someone or to just to do these crazy things. Because typically, and this is just my experience, like yours could be different. People who tend to be extremely mean, um, just nasty regardless of their social position, are typically very unhappy for some reason. They may have every all of the creature comforts in the world, but for some reason, they're very unhappy. Also, just once again, my experience, your experience may be different, that super religious people seem to be mean as fuck. If you're filled with the love of God, why are you so mean and judgmental and angry? It makes no sense. But when you lift up the dress and look at the ankles and see there's a lot of angst and unhappiness there, then it makes perfect sense. Once again, this goes back to living purpose, living the life of design of intent. When you have authentic happiness, it's a buffer against all of that stuff. And you don't have to put on a show to pretend that you're happy or to look happy because you'll truly be happy, if that makes any sense. So. Do your 50 to 100 words a day or plus 100 plus because you don't have these bloodhounds out there looking for stuff for you to looking for. You're going to have to do your own work here. And as you write this in a few days, few weeks, you know, things will become a little clearer to you because for many of you, this is going to be the first time that you actually really thought about your life in these terms. It'll be eye opening. Now, since we're cranking it up, we're going to discuss the business legal structure. 
is a mumbo jumbo. Why you need it? How long can you get by without it? This is my recommendation to you. If you are starting a business from scratch, do not incorporate. Don't even print up a business card unless you have to. Find out if that business will make money, which you can do before doing any of this stuff. You could do, I mean, that's the thing. That's called validation, which we talk about a lot in 30 days, 2,500 bucks. Validate it. Figure out if it makes money. Okay, if it makes money, then you keep cranking it up and you crank it up till it gets to the point where then you have to get a website. Don't get a website. Don't incorporate. Don't do business cards and all this stuff until you find out if that business will make money. I used to sell contract office furniture, which is when you go to a restaurant or you go to an office building, that's called contract office furniture. It's built differently. It's way, it's much sturdier because it has to be. Like, you know, if you go to all staples and get your computer chair, and if you're like me and you're in your chair all day, you're going to be buying a new chair within a matter of weeks or months because those chairs are only rated for, they're not rated for continuous use. They're, they're, they're rated for occasional use. And if you pick them up and look at the label, they'll tell you if you sit in that chair more than eight hours a day, you voided the warranty. They weren't designed for this chair I'm sitting in right now. I can sit in this bad boy 12 hours a day and it'll be just fine because it's built for that. But it wasn't cheap. It was 450 bucks. So understand with your structure. Do what you can with what you have before you start investing a lot of money, because the thing is, when you do an LLC, an incorporation, you're going to spend money and then you're going to have reporting obligations. So put this off as long as possible. And I'm telling that to the folks who are brand new, who didn't take 30 days to 2,500 bucks. But for you who are in the position to get to the $10,000 net because you already have your business. Some of you are not, you don't have a business structure. Many of you are still sole proprietors. Actually, you're screwing yourself because typically if your business has been validated, then you will know. And back to the point that I was going to make with the contract office furniture business. I was selling to B2B, business to business. I got to see a lot of financials. I got to talk to a lot of people. And there was so many times that we would chase deals of this company. It was just getting started. They rented this office space. They bought office furniture. They did all of this stuff. Then a year later, when I'm going through my contacts, it's like, hey, you need anything else? They're out of business. They spent more time on the accumulants of business than the actual business of business. Common happens all the time. So if you don't have a business right now and it's not making money, you do not need to incorporate unless you have capital to invest in the business. You're going to be doing something where you're entering people's homes or you're going to have vehicles on the road. Different ball game. Even if it's brand new, you have to go ahead and incorporate to protect yourself because when you have people going into people's homes, when you have vehicles on the road, you have exposure to risk. So that information <laughs> does not apply to you. Typically, that's why you need it. And, you know, in the beginning, if you are not going in people's homes, you're not selling a product that can kill someone. If your likelihood of getting sued is very, 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 very low. You can put off your incorporation until you get to the point where your business is actually making money, where you can use the money that your business made to pay for your incorporation. At that point, it makes way more sense. You're more comfortable and you actually have something to talk to your accountant about. To ink or not. Now, there are some people you'll never have to incorporate. You're doing a cottage business, something from home. There's no risk. You could do this for years and years and never worry about getting sued. However, if you're making money and we're going to talk about this and you want to play the game, which the United States of America is built on. And that's something that we have exported to the capitalism. We're exporting capitalism left and right. You may want to pay attention to this. Because I'm not even going to go through all of the steps of an LLC or an incorporation. That, there's tons of information on that online. What I'm going to talk to you about is the why. Just discuss. 
you know, if you're just starting, don't know how long this business is going to do to be around, don't incorporate. But you do get your business started and it starts making money. Then you start, you know, getting exposure. Then, OK, go ahead and get your LLC, which could be anywhere from a matter of weeks or it could be a year or two. It just depends on where your business is. So I'm going to speak to the people here for 30 days to $10,000 as if your business is up and running. You're making thousands of dollars a month and you need to incorporate. So from this segment, this is how I want to talk to you. Because if you have a risk of being sued ever, you need to incorporate. You just have to do it because what you pay to incorporate is nothing compared to what you can lose if, say, you get into an accident. And I'm going to tell you how the game is played. And this is one of the reasons for keeping a low profile. I had someone tap the bumper of Humpty. Um, if you don't know, Humpty was the E250 van we used to have uh, when we had the storage trucking business. Van look count, you know, van had like one of those super bumpers. It was a state owned vehicle bought at an auction. I ain't really think nothing of it. But when the cop was running the tag and the guy who tapped me, he said, oh, this is a business vehicle. Didn't think nothing of it. Later on, I'm getting contacted by dude's lawyer. They're looking and dude's like, oh, you have this corporate... People sue based on the ability to collect. All these folks are like, oh, I could get sued. Lawsuits are very expensive. It's not the filing cost, it's the attorney cost. So that's one of the reasons I'm saying with a great deal of certainty, unless, you know, if you don't have shit, chances of you being sued, even if you did some stuff, are very low. But once again, protect yourself. I'm just, you know, giving you my experience. But if you have some shit, and you didn't even do anything. The chances of you getting sued because someone can get some money go up. So just you know, some advice to you about keeping your affairs to yourself, keeping how much money you make from family members, because that little Johnny fell in the living room and it was just an accident. And he got, you know, got up and wiped his nose and was cool. Could turn into an event if you people know you have money. Attorneys are not stupid. It's like. They'll tell you, hey, there's really no point in suing this person because they don't have shit. <laughs> so this is some stuff that you need to know because as you make money and accumulate wealth and then accumulate assets, you can become a target even though you didn't do anything. So this is another reason that you need to put some buffer between you and your assets and your business. Now, let's talk about something that's really that's really, really cool. Tale of two companies. Now, what is a holding company? How it benefits you and why you should do one. Now, this is going to be super, super freaking cool. Because for those of you that didn't know, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, it's a holding company. You look it up. You don't believe me. Google it. It controls stuff. It's a, a company designed to manage and hold stuff without actually doing anything except collecting money. And it's about leverage. You can have a holding company. I mean, I'm not going to get into is I could speak the rest of the time of this webinar about nothing about holding companies. There's a lot to learn. But essentially, this is what you can do. Many people who are like trying to start a business it gets a little daunting because it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to start. But many of you are like me. You may start two, three, four companies. Now, this is where the holding company gets to be really slick. Today, you have no business, right? You know, I'm talking to the people who have no business. You can go out and start a holding company. Just go ahead and like my damn company, Inc., whatever, whatever. And, you know, you can sell shares, whatever. You have a lot of options with an incorporation that you don't have on LLC. So you go ahead and you do this holding company and as you develop your companies. So essentially you can have this holding company. And yeah, I'm going to put that up there. You can have this holding company. Then you can develop your companies and either sell buy whatever way you want to do it. That company to your holding company. Now, what does this do? You have this company, which is an incorporation which is ran by this company, which is an incorporation. Not one layer, but two layers. Now, this is the beautiful part about the holding company. Since the holding company just collects money, that's all it does. 
it can never ever be sued for anything because it, it never ever puts itself in to be in a position of risk because it just controls this company. This company gets sued. It's toast. OK, you, you, don't, you know, it's toast, whatever. Bam. This holding company, it doesn't serve clients. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't own any vehicles. It does nothing but collect money. And ultimately, it's protected from being sued by the structure of the company. Now, if you take that holding company, and you just like put your house or something in there. Yeah, you can have a problem. But long as you leave the holding company, it's a holding company in name only where it just controls stuff and have all of the money coming from these other companies, which are out there at risk. You're still protected and your money's still protected because that company can't be sued because it don't do shit. Don't you love being an American? Don't you love living in America? Because this country is predicated uh, for investors, business owners. It's not set up for the average man. This company, uh, the country is run by the rule of law, which is this stuff. <laughs> this is legal. This is Mitt Romney. This is Bush. This is Bill Gates. This is all these guys do this stuff. And this is the reason that, you know, if something happened, you can't get to their money. And this is how these families have built generational wealth through trust and holding companies, because you can never as long as the holding company pays his taxes. Nothing's going to happen to it. And this is where it gets really sweet. You create this holding company today, right? You set it up the right way. Your kids can have this holding company. You can make them partners of the holding company. And once again, before you do any of this stuff, because I'll, I'll say this before I go on, because this is one. This is your task for this webinar. Name, write the articles of incorporation. You can do it yourself or you can hire someone. Begin to work to establish your holding company. So the goal to have this done within 60 days might be 90. Some places you have to advertise in a legal organ for so many days before the state will grant you your incorporation. So essentially, by creating this holding company, you could create a legacy for your kids that's able to give them money. And once again, talk to professionals, spend the money, talk to professionals, talk to an accountant, talk to most. Yeah, and the account and the account will lead you in the right way because the accountant will know the best guys to do the wills, the trust and stuff like that. But essentially, you can have nothing right and begin your estate planning by starting this corporation and just bring, you know, when your kids are age, it's like, hey, psh, you're uh, you get X amount of the corporation or uh, you get X amount of this year or the corporation pays the trust. The trust pays the kids. There's a lot of ways to do this. But for the sake of this webinar and starting business, we're not going to get too deep with that. We're going to say this. This is your goal. You're going to start a holding company. So this solves the problem of like, what the hell am I going to do? And once again, this is predicated on people who already have a business and they're already making money. So this should not be a problem because you just uh, once again talk because some of you already have accountants and you can just talk to your accountant. Some of your accounts be like, I don't know about that. And others be like, hell yeah, just depends if your accountant is either a mouse or an eagle. And there's a world of difference between accounts. Trust me on this. But essentially you can do this get this going while you work on your hustle and if your hustle turns into a business you uh sell it to the holding company and then money passes through there so say your hustle gets in trouble say it gets sued say it's a vehicle and it gets and it's an accident and bam okay that company's toast they can go after that company and the assets of that company but they cannot touch this holding company which has been getting the money the whole time the beauty of living in America. Okay, so I know sound was on. <laughs> and uh, I didn't say it, but for many, years, oh, many of you who are here, I answer the questions after the presentation. So I will jump in there. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So if anyone's got any questions, uh, I know how you feel about eBay, but is being a sole proprietor OK for this? Yeah, because <laughs> the problem with eBay and Amazon is they're very hard to scale. They're very hard to scale. You can get to a certain point and make I wouldn't do an LLC for eBay or Amazon unless I was making 15 G's a month. I wouldn't do it. 
if that's all you're doing, if you're doing other stuff, it'll make sense. Tony's in the house. What's up? What's up? So if anyone has any questions about this, let me know. Someone said no audio. I'm looking. I have audio and the screen is showing and I'm recording this. So I'm doing a little better today. But while you come up with some questions, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to give you some resources here. Because I want you to do your research. So send that to everybody. Just and there's a there's, like I said, there's a ton of information out here about this stuff. So there you go. Anna, what are good books for trust and holding companies? I cannot tell you. Uh, I'll tell you who taught me. I was sitting in Waffle House one day, and I meet this guy, and we just start chatting. And uh, he actually owns malls. He owns malls. And I was like, okay. And, you know, and I was like, I told him what I did. And he just starts telling me this stuff. He just starts, well, this is what I do. It's like I have this holding company, and I have 20 malls. And the dude said, like, what shit? He owns 20 malls. And he's like, okay. So here's the holding company, and then each mall is an LLC, but they all pay their rents to the holding company. Then he says, the holding company is my retirement plan because it's going to have this long 10-year history, 15-year history of making all this money, which I can in turn sell <laughs> to someone else and cash out. And uh, actually, I've talked to him several times about it, and he helped me do everything. So I never read a book about it. I just knew someone that was doing it. And like I said, this is one of the reasons like you go to uh, 25, 30 days, 2,500 bucks. There's a tip in there where you go out and meet people. You have no idea what can happen to you if you just start talking to someone sitting next to you in the restaurant. You have no idea. I mean, so many times that I've gotten great information or someone was able to help me. It, it was freaking ridiculous. It really, really was. Uh, do we have to do this right now or can we do it later when we make the money? Like I, like I said, $10,000, 30 days to $10,000 is predicated for people who are already making money. If you're in a situation where you're not doing well, then go take 30 days to 2,500 bucks because that course is predicated on if you don't have any money, you're hustling, you're trying to build something, you're trying to validate your business. Uh, Cleaver. Hey, Glendon, I have proof your power of six works. Without transportation, I made $40 yesterday with the potential to make another $150 by the end of the week. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You can make money without money today. It's crazy how you can do that. Congratulations. I like your hustle. Uh, Tion, I watched your video this morning about increasing your mental bank. I think my issue is I don't believe I can make money outside of a job. I'm going to say this again. <clears throat> I think my issue is that I don't believe I can make money outside of a job. That is not your issue. That is the issue of many people. I had some fool making comments on the video. You can't make money without a job. I, I was like, it part, part of, well, okay, let me slow down because I get really passionate about this. Part of it is cultural indoctrination and family. If you have a family where everyone goes to work and they have a job and you have no entrepreneurs, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking to looks like witchcraft because it's so unfamiliar to people. What are some resources to help me increase my mental bank? I've been listening to the Hustler Mindset audiobook and Lead to Feel. Those are your resources. Listen to Lead to Feel 30, 40 times. It'll just start to click. One day you'll just like, uh, you'll start doing that stuff. Just keep listening to lead to feel and more importantly, start doing. When your mind sees that you create a business, then you were able to get money from someone for that business. It becomes real. And each time that you repeat that, you'll be able to do more and more and more. And you make a very good point why I changed this course around. It originally was going to be 12 months to $100,000. 
But it had happened yesterday. Someone's like, can you really go from nothing to making a lot of money? Yes, you can. But mentally, if your mindset is wrong, you will not. And many people do not believe that they're worth that kind of money. That is the roadblock. How many times have you seen someone on television, someone that you worked with, that you was like, they're stupid as fuck, but they have more money than you because they believe they're worth that money with their dumb ass. It is the mind. <laughs> How many times have you worked for someone? You was like, this is an idiot. How many times have you seen someone get promoted who was not qualified over someone who was qualified, but the person who was qualified didn't want the responsibility? Mindset is everything. What was the website you talked about yesterday for the free web hosting? Um, refresh my memory on that. Michael, can you have multiple businesses in a holding company? Yes, you can. Ask Warren Buffett. I think he's got a few uh, few hundred in there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm speaking out of turn. I know he has several companies in there. Also, I read somewhere that S corporations don't have the benefits it used to have. Can you shed some light on that? I have never done an S corporation because I always thought they were limited. It depends upon your industry. It depends on where you are. It depends on what you're doing. Because this is something else, too. Each state, secretary of state, the corporations are a little different. It's like that's why some people go to Montana, because I think there's uh, no state tax. If you incorporate in Bermuda, you can legally avoid paying federal tax because you're incorporated offshore. So there's a lot to it. I don't know a lot about escorts because I never did one. I've only done any corporations or LLCs. Anna, well, that's way better than books more than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude knew he was talking about. He hooked me up. Just sitting there talking. He did Waffle House start talking to this guy. His name's Brian. He was an awesome resource. Adolphus, what is your favorite Waffle House? All of them. <laughs> uh, Mark, how did he do what exactly? Be more specific. Uh, Chris, I want to create a legacy for my kids. Not sure when to bring them in on the company and how much percentage wise should I give them? They are 14 and 11 and they do some stuff to help. Bring them in now. Don't tell them what you're going to do. Show them what you're doing. Talk about the incorporation. Talk about the business. Sit around the dinner table and say, like, hey, this is what dad does. Tell them now because your kids are going to have this issue. Most of the people they know or are friends with or in the family, they don't, they're not going to have a father like you. So they're going to be radically different anyway. And with this training, you got to like start now, start now, you know, just like, hey, this is a corporation. Uh, I have people who are letting their kids. And sometimes it makes me <laughs> kind of scares me. They let their kids listen to these webinars because they don't want them to get the cultural indoctrination that the only way that you can make money is through a job. It is a very hard thing to break free from. I feel for myself that getting laid off three times in 18 months was the thing that just broke me. It was just like. Because for me, it wasn't working. It was like, this this just isn't working. I mean, I'm doing well, then bam, here it is, I'm gone. Bam, here it is, I'm gone. So I was pushed off of the uh, compound. Chuck, how do we hide our assets from basic, oh, snap, there's a big house with nice stuff inside. Customer pulls a slip and fall on exit. Have assets or in in charge and don't want to lose them if this shit hits the fan or a big pimp Uncle Sam gets greedy as I'm coming up in the world. Okay, let's let's use the word protect and shelter assets. Let's not use the word hide. Hide indicates that you're doing something wrong. Typically, let's take your house. Um, if you can, because typically, you know, whoever finances the house has to be a bit credit worthy if you finance it. That's why when you do a mortgage, it's going to be in your name. But say you have some property that's paid off. You can put it in a trust. You can put it in an LLC. And if someone goes to look at the property records. Oh, only this LLC owns it. And that's it. Um, typically, you have to sit down with an accountant and just say, hey, how can I protect my assets against taxes? This is very common. There's nothing shady about it. So 
essentially you've got to like having a business or give you give you a really easy one say you have the two businesses right you got the company that's making money you got the holding company that you're pushing the money into if you spend that money for business purposes in those corporations those are net losses that you pay i mean not net losses those are uh, expenses that you pay on give you a scenario you want to go to hawaii right you want to spend a week in hawaii right this is what you do you go to in Google, you find whoever that you can do business with. So you say you go to Hawaii and you do what I do and you, you give a webinar, or you give a seminar for a few days and then you stay another seven. You went out there for business and you just extended your business trip. You get to write that off. That's one of the ways that you can enjoy your money and still be within the letter of the law. Now, if you go out to Hawaii and said you went out there for business and you didn't do shit and somehow they find out you're in trouble. But <clears throat> there's a lot of ways because essentially I could not tell you all the answers for your question in five minutes. There are people, their whole careers are predicated on doing exactly the things that you talk about. Uh, John said Uber is for black sedan car owners only. Uh, actually, that's not true. Um. I signed up for Uber. Now, my vehicle's like a charcoal gray. I signed up for Uber just to do it for a group and um, put in. I got accepted. So you go to the website, put in your car. They're going to ask for all this stuff. They're going to ask for your car insurance, all this other stuff. Okay. Anna says Blue Host. That's, the, that's who I use to host my stuff, but it's not free. Oh, Anna just answered it. Uh, it's not free. I don't. That's why I think I was confused. I use someone asked me who do I use for hosting, and I said Bluehost. But it's not free. There's a charge for that. <laughs> Here's Jay. Quick way to make money is to record a testimonial video for a business, upload it to YouTube, call the owner, and let him know what you did. I say, hey, try it. I know that's a good way if you want to get on someone's radar. Uh, that's pretty good because I've actually done something like that. If you want to get the attention of a company that is in social media and do a testimonial video and a tweet and they'll find you. And then since they found you, they'll talk to you. Uh, Jay again, from there off to create a professional video for a hundred bucks, then go to Fiverr and pay five to twenty dollars for a quality video <laughs> delivered to them. <laughs> I love Fiverr. Uh, Chris, I used uh, GoDaddy only seven nine nine a year for the website name. Uh, yes, I'm still in contact with him. TB. Okay, Mark, how did he make money without spending any money? The listener said he was making forty to one hundred and fifty dollars coming in. Uh, okay, I don't know what he did, but if you're listening, people want to know what you did. Uh, Michael, what are the steps to take money out of the holding company? You just do a distribution. I mean, a, a distribution. See, when you control a company, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty. Uh, David, is a holding the only place you want to hide your real identity? Uh, web hosting, like Dream Hosting and Privacy Guard, are there others? Typically, this is what you do to hide your web identity. When you sign up for your, your registrar, what they're going to do is default to whatever information is on your credit card. So what you do is you have one of your credit cards to go to a business address like a mailbox, etc., whatever. Or I guess it's UPS store now. And you can call up your credit card company and put your company name. It's like, hey, I want to add this person to a credit card and do it as your company name. Uh, most places you can go online and do it. So you got a credit card in the company name going out to this UPS box and you just pay for it and no one really knows who you are. That's a real quick and easy way to do it. Let's see. Okay. Uh, blogger. This is the deal. Internet hosting is so cheap. Just get rid of the idea of free. You can get 
a year for like 50, 60 bucks most places for the whole year. Chuck, how does one find a good account, lawyer, or attorney? I mean, an account, lawyer, etc., that will work for you and not the system? How do you really know that they have the right person working for you for the full extent of the law of the rules? Recommendations from other business owners. That's who I use. I don't go out. Look, whenever I need an attorney or an accountant, I go through my network and say, hey, who does this and who's good? Uh, Teresa, I can't. <laughs> I can't be, no, no, you can't see the questions. Only the presenters can see the questions. So you're all right, Teresa. Uh, do you, peace lover, do you use Aweber? No, I use Get Response. Uh, Rachel, I missed the part about Uber. Can you expand on it? I can do better than that. Just uh, go to the website, go through the steps, and they're going to tell you if you can use your car or not. They're going to ask for your car. They're going to ask for, is it registered? They're going to ask for, they're going to want proof that you have insurance. And they want proof that you're a registered before they even let you do stuff. I love their website. I just love their website. It's freaking awesome. Uh, Cleaver. I stopped at every business that was on my walk to the grocery store and asked them if they had any old computers they wanted to throw away or if they needed any computer repair. One company wanted a website. One other one wanted more memory installed. Yet another happy another had a computer they just threw away and sold it to a friend that needed a computer for 40 bucks. I'm going to read this again. Because I believe Cleaver is the one that had no job, no transportation. I stopped at every business that was on my walk to the grocery store. And at, now this is the key. I stopped at every business. And then the other part is I asked them if they had any old computers they wanted to throw away or they needed any computer repair. So he Cleaver's going from his house to the grocery store and he managed to get $40 and the potential to make another 150. I mean, there it is. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Uh, the office. I just did my taxes and I got a refund because of my business. Another good reason to own the business. I frequently say that if one person's going to work, the other person needs a business. If you're married and you have a partner who has a job and you have a business, if you do it right, you will not pay any federal income taxes, depending on your business and you have enough expenses and stuff. I have, I have one of my clients who didn't believe me. His wife hated that he was talking to me and he had a business. She didn't want to be self-employed because she wanted him to have a job. And when they got that $15,000 refund check back, she became a believer. And the reason they got it was his mileage. Dude was clocking like, you know, $1,500, $2,000 a month in mileage expenses. Because he's going all over the place. The mileage was the biggest expense. And that was the reason they got 15 G's back. That they would not. If he had just had a job making the same money, they would have had to pay more money versus getting 15 grand back. Uh, Jonathan, hey, Glennon, you think GoDaddy is the best for e-commerce site hosting? I actually don't think GoDaddy is a good place to host at all. Uh, GoDaddy is probably a good place to buy names, but no, I don't think they do hosting. I would not host with GoDaddy. Just a personal opinion, nothing against them. I, they're just kind of expensive for that. Chris, for me, got the startup money by finding stuff in my house to sell. Then ask people you know. Hey, you got anything to sell? I split the profit with you. Quick sales from Facebook groups. Best sales channel for me. Uh, Cynthia, wet, wet to see. W-I-X dot com is a great free website host. I started off free and only pay six uh, ninety a month and love it. I'm just going to copy and paste that for people who want it. I've heard of them. I never used them. So... I'm going to send that to everybody. David, did you make any money flipping those blocks that you abandoned instead of uh, storage, uh, show, store, auction, storage auction Shogun? 
Should this be something we think of as exit strategies? Actually, I just let the blogs go. I didn't try to flip them. I didn't try to sell them. I know there are people that do it, but essentially they were worthless. They were really worthless. I mean, they, there wasn't any traffic coming. And Urban Pack Rat was part of that was I knew that I wasn't going to do storage auctions forever. And it kept, it hurt to let it go. But I knew that if that was just going to keep popping up in Google as the number one ranking for me. And it wasn't going to make sense with me doing a pivot. So I had to let it go. Didn't sell it. Didn't want it out there. It, I had to euthanize it. Sometimes when you're changing your business, you're going to have to let something go that you like and desire to get better things. And Chris got the idea from uh, Glendon's 30 days to 2,500. Cleaver's out there hustling. Now, let's talk about Cleaver some more. He didn't have any money, right? But he's... Uh, put himself in a position to make two thousand dollars and i know he's like whoa, whoa he said he made 40 and um he said uh he made potentially 150 he did that from going to the store okay i don't know where cleaver lives but if he goes the other three directions because i don't know if he went south but if he goes north east and west and does and repeats what he did just every day go out there and repeat that he could probably make two g's in a month just I was having lunch with a friend yesterday and in 30 days to 2,500, one of the tasks is to go out and meet 10 strangers. One of the things is if you cannot go out and meet 10 strangers with nothing on the line, it's just, hey, hi, I'm Glendon. If you can't do that, how in the hell can you go out and sell something to 10 strangers? So develop the skill of meeting people, i.e. me talking to the guy at Waffle House and he taught me how to do holding companies. You'll never know what you'll find out by just going out and, you know, people are going to say no. People are going to like, no, no, no. But he went in as a resource. He's like, hey, do you have any computers you don't want? Oh, if you got a computer, do you need it fixed? Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, Chuck, how do people find killer businesses like Uber? So much out there. Where to find and how to know which one's a real deal. You just have to try them. I mean, when Uber came out, I signed up. They have meetups here. They've been on television. It's just, it's there. Uh, you're welcome, Rachel. Uh, Cynthia, what was your strategy to get so many followers on YouTube? Did people just happen to find you because they were searching for storage unit info? Any other tips? Now, that was it. When I started with YouTube, I had no freaking idea what the hell I was doing. I just kept slapping videos up. And I saw a correlation. The more videos I put up, the more books I saw. But to give you a disclaimer, to lift the veil, YouTube, that was five years ago. YouTube is radically different now than it was back then. Radically different. Radically, radically different. So one of the things that's happening is everyone's going to YouTube. So YouTube is getting more crowded. There's still a lot of room to grow, but... It is not as easy as it was in back in the day because I did the research. When YouTube first started, I believe 2006, there was a few things that made it really special. First of all, in 2006, camera phones were not as ubiquitous as they are now. So anyone that had a nice camera had an advantage and most people didn't have a nice camera. So it was just middle class of well-to-do kids who were doing videos. Then they would go over to MySpace, which there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, there was none of this other stuff. And then their videos would just explode through MySpace. And then you'll get people who were getting like a thousand subscribers a week because it was a limited environment. Now there's so much more going on. But with YouTube, and there will be a course at some point later on this year about that because I've learned some new tricks. And the th essentially what worked two years ago is not going to work today pretty much with YouTube. <laughs> Cleaver says go daddy sucks. You can't see the questions, Teresa. Uh, Jay, what made you go with Bluehost versus HostGator? Uh, strangely enough, they found me on YouTube and they offered me an affiliate account. And as part of the account, 
I got uh, free hosting for a year. It's kind of hard to be free. Tell me. You have all right on mileage. Do you document the mileage or take the standard mileage deduction riding around buying and selling? For you to claim mileage, you have to keep a log and you have to file your taxes quarterly to get the mileage deduction. Mark says, I wex I <laughs> all right, I'll just put this in there since people are offering up tips. This is uh, Mark says this company is pretty good. Uh, Cleaver says thanks for the cheap hosting site. Uh, David, I put an ad on Craigslist taking old TVs and scrapped them for copper, made 150 in a week, then went out and bought the storage rooms for hundred dollars and got started from there. Ha ha. <laughs> you it's a, it's about hustle. It's really about hustle. Damn, Cleaver did this in a very small town in central Kentucky. <laughs> Chris, go crap. Go daddy sucks. Damn you, Glendon. Uh, this is what Cleaver. Cleaver says he found me by looking for ways to make money with no job. So it was the key words for me. Thank you for making me get up and leave, <laughs> up and leave little scared little bitchville. <laughs> Yeah, that one video. Keywords make are huge on YouTube. Uh, Cleaver, you mentioned in one of your videos a place to sell photos you take. Can you give me the website? iStock Photo. Just Google um, uh, Google royalty-free images. And it'll be iStock Photo and other places that you can sell your photos. Chuck, how hard can you hustle without worrying about taxes? Dollar amount, cap level. Millions? Ask any drug dealer. If you get paid in cash, it's a whole different ballgame. Chris is still... We had this exercise from, <laughs> from 30 days to 2,500. I'll give it to you and see if you can do it. Uh, what you'll do is find a quiet place in your house, sit down, and in your mind, only in your mind, you will go off a high diving board, high as you can imagine, and you will jump off of that diving board and execute a perfect dive into the pool. Mentally, when I got that exercise, I kept screwing it up for a few weeks. It will illustrate confidence in your thought process, because if you can't do it, that just lets you know what your subconscious is working on. Oh, Teresa, I'm sorry I asked about eBay being a sole proprietor. I, once again, I think that's fine for eBay. The thing is with eBay and Amazon, they're not your business. Uh, Peace Labor says you can do it yearly because I did it yearly. Um, if you have a business, you're supposed to file quarterly. You can get away with it the first year. But hey, once again, talk to your uh, professionals. Melissa says Cleaver is adorable. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, any idea who has for the best online store templates? No, um, I actually was messing around with Shopify for about four days and I shut it down because Gumroad was a much better deal. At some point, yes, I will be discussing how to make money with the YouTube partner program. And we are at 404. So what I'm going to do, spread these links. I'm spread the love. That's lifetime. And that is yearly. For anyone that wants to start changing their life. Let's go back to the questions. <laughs> Uh, David, I see a lot of ads about broken phones and laptops on Craigslist. Is there a real story behind it or just people scrapping for the metals? Oh, no, no. I'll tell you the story. Since the market has opened up internationally, crappy phones that we don't think much about here sell for big money overseas. 
There are certain phone models that people are looking for because they have a certain feature. There are many people who actually want phones that don't have GPS for certain reasons. And there are certain phones. I sold my iPhone for 325. I sold my iPhone 5 for 325. It was a year old. A broken phones were going for 200. Uh, other things because there is a phones are not as disposable as they used to be meaning that put it this way I, I paid my Verizon bill today and Verizon is still selling the 4s so as long as that phone is being sold then the resale value is pretty good broken phones have a lot of components for people who fix stuff and they sell them Uh, delivery service for uh, Craigslist is a great idea to get started if you have a truck. I agree. That's actually in my book, Pimping Craigslist. Chuck, been a long time coming. I'm no longer a webinar virgin. I think there's a few others who can say the same because of yesterday and today. Thanks. Remind folks they must re-register each day or day of the webinar. What I do is send out an email every day. So if you sign up for this one, you're on the list and you'll you'll get notification. Cleaver says he's single. <laughs> uh, Chris, what is the best iPhone credit card reader? There's so many out there. Square seems to be the biggest. Square just fixed their reader. Um, I actually meant to put a picture of it in the Facebook group. It's bigger and it's flatter. Um, essentially, Square does the best marketing, but the deal is they pretty much all operate the same. What is Gumroad? Uh, that's a place that you can collect money and sell digital goods. Let's see. Hold on a second. I hate the fact that Google has, you know, stuff doesn't go into the, the box anymore. You start typing stuff, you're looking for things. It, uh, this is Gumroad. I will let everyone get a gander. I will I actually did a review on Gumroad. It's pretty slick. I'll tell you, I was looking at Shopify because they offer a few things that are a little bit better. But since Gumroad is about two years old, I actually can talk to the CEO and he asked me, what can we do to make it better? So I've got his ear. But it's a great resource if you sell digital products. Uh, and I posted on Square a physical product. What can I do to bring people to the link? Um, go to 30 days to 2500 bucks. That whole course is predicated on answering your question. Uh, will I be discussing how to make money with the YouTube partner program? Actually, no. And this is from Jay, and I'm going to tell you why. You make more money from selling a service or product on YouTube than you will ever make from AdSense unless you get up to millions of views per month. All of the older established YouTubers who kept refreshing their, uh, their, their content, they're fine. But for new people to make that kind of money with AdSense now is very challenging. You can easily come up with a widget or an ebook and make way more money. Let's see, Cindy. I found money in Las Vegas in slot machine trades, 1988 to 1998. The more I did it, the more I learned perfectly legal. Me, why? My newborn. Thanks for the seminar. <laughs> Average a hundred dollars a day. Wait a minute. That's three thousand dollars a month most months. That's pretty cool. If ye shall look, ye shall find. Um Teresa, if eBay is in my business, would you recommend setting up my own website and selling used clothing? Yes. Oh, that Flappy Bird thing? Yeah, that was ridiculous. People, phones were going crazy. 
Peace, love. A cleaver don't get married, man. That's funny. Okay, it's 410. I went way over. I will be here tomorrow again at 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. I will send out the links for everybody who wants to register. And uh, with that, I will see you on the good side. Thanks for coming out. And also, be sure, if you want to catch up on 30 days to 2,500, just go ahead and sign up for it. And you will start making remarkable progress in your hustling. All right. With that, once again, I'll see you on the good side.